Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host, UK Kachidori. Hello and welcome back to another very special episode. Today I'm joined by Jason Hapkus. Let me ask you a question. You know, with everything going on around, are you one of those people that are feeling stuck today? Maybe you are trying a lot of things to get your business moving forward. Maybe the sales are stagnant and you just can't figure out how to solve that. Or maybe it's a personal challenge. You're feeling like you're not fulfilled today. Despite all the hard working and everything that you've amassed to this day, well, you are, if you're one of those people, stay tuned because my guest today has found a way to get unstuck. In fact, from a personal story from the 2008 crash, he has managed to come out winning and as a champion. In fact, today I'm delighted that he is sharing with the world how to do exactly that. Jason, thank you so much for joining us here on the show today. It's a pleasure to be here, Yaka. I appreciate you having me. Incredible. You've got amazing statistics when you talk about everybody's struggles. Would you share with our audience today? Yeah, so statistically speaking, and these are framed for the United States, one in five um, individuals in, in the country is living with or could be diagnosed with mental illness. And even worse, more than half of those people are not receiving or seeking out treatment to support them with the struggles they have. And I think from that understanding of recognizing everyone's struggles, there is a connection point where you transcend the conversation above mental illness that we all go through seasons of our lives that things may not go as smoothly as we would like or we expect or we don't show up in a way that we imagined we would. And I think that there's an opportunity for us through the essence of struggle and the humanity between us um, in being able to find deeper and, and more meaningful connection. Incredible. Well, I'm delighted that you are here today, Jason, because of some of the testimonials that I hear of the people you have helped over the years since you went through the same thing. In fact, I'm very interested in, how, in hearing what it was like for you during those difficult years. But uh, some of the stories we hear and some of them that are on your website, by the way, your website is incredible. Uh, and uh, Bill, if you want to take this website down, it is realpeoplerealife.org. You can find out more testimonies and more stories there uh, that Jason is really busy creating by helping other people. Jason, uh, t- let's look back to 2008. You were a successful uh, a, you know, business owner in real estate and you're doing so many things, you know, really going for it, creating your ideal American dream. And then something happened. Talk to us about what was happening there. Right. So like many um, in life, I kind of was caught in the same Um, epicenter of the crash that we all were in. I, like you mentioned, had a real estate career. Um, I owned commercial and residential properties that we would go in and rehab and and offer to the public for the needs of their business. Um, My family's in heavy highway road construction and did a lot of work in the family business as well. And and frankly, was pretty diversified. I had a recruiting firm and a payroll factoring firm and several different things. And I remember just before the crash, my banker telling me, what we love about you is how diversified you are. And I sort (laughs) of stood with that moniker of success of, oh gosh, I've achieved it or made it. And then the crash happened and kind of systematically one thing after the other, you know, I started seeing contractions in each of my businesses and the the recruiting business, nobody was looking for engineers. And if we didn't have an engineer, we didn't need payroll factoring company to support the engineers that, that we offered out into the marketplace and, you know, real estate, we know what played out in that crisis. And, and frankly, it was not that I wasn't prepared for that time about being diversified. I just really didn't imagine or live in the the real moment of the the depth or the impact that it could have. Frankly, the crash is not what really ultimately took me down. It was my unwillingness to change my lifestyle. I continued to fly high and live big and, you know, do all the things that I thought I was was deserving of in life. And, and, And honestly, my own ego and arrogance brought me to my knees. And that took the course of another three or four years to play out. 
but I can say lovingly, I lost my mind, my money and my way. And that experience, I think, was so foundational for me really being brought to my knees and deciding how do I want to show up in the world? And if I'm going to rebuild this life, because at that point I had no choice but to rebuild, what is that going to look like? And how am I going to do that with intention and authenticity? Yeah. One of the things that you said there, which resonate with me, and I know a lot of people listening here will find it interesting, is your unwillingness to change uh, or to adapt to what was happening was a really big part of you know you getting to that place. For anybody listening today who may be uh, experiencing such, uh, maybe things are coming down a little bit than they used to be. How important is it that they take a different approach and be flexible? I think it's kind of everything, really. The the reality of is wherever you go, there you are. And if you if, if you Bill are listening and and are a business owner who have achieved the success that you imagined and and are really stuck from from scaling to the next level, the fact of the matter is is you are the epicenter in the heart of every decision that you make, whether it's in your personal or professional life. And I find that many times businesses and business owners specifically. You know, they make decisions day in and day out, and, and many people get into business because they were good at something and decided to go a direction and offer that to the marketplace. Well, the reality is, is there's not a guidebook on how to recognize the things that you're not well suited to do in your business <laughs> or well trained for. And you have to seek out other people like myself who can come in and help you navigate the landmines and, and create a roadmap for success. But but the, the key point of that is recognizing wherever you go, there you are. So if something isn't working in your business, I think it's a beautiful opportunity to shine the spotlight back on yourself and take a moment to say, are there places that I am stuck that are keeping me from making this decision or going forward wholeheartedly in the way that I know I need to go? And really asking yourself the question about what could I do that could help make a shift to get unstuck and move forward with life. And that those are the things that I really get passionate about helping people with and recognize that, you know, sometimes in our own limited view, I think as entrepreneurs, we think we're the only person that's been through this. <laughs> Nobody else has had this experience. And as you well know, Yao Kai, and I know your listeners know, the fact of the matter is you are not alone. That's and right. I assure you, whatever you're struggling with, Somebody else can meet you there, has been there, and can show up and give you some guidance on how to get get moving again. That's right. And only those people who are willing to uh, reach out for assistance truly can navigate the difficulties of times. Right. And you will not crumble and you know be gone, You'll be wiped out with everything that is happening. Because your success is written in the connection that you have, in the people you invite in your world. I want to talk about uh, getting unstuck for a moment, uh, you know, in a moment, but uh, which, you, you know, going back to uh, the time that you were in that phase where everything was coming down, you know, yeah, what, in your opinion, knowing what you know now, could have stopped you from, you know, getting to your knees perhaps even faster than you you did? That's a great question. And, and I want to be clear, I had achieved a level of success that many people aspire to and will never achieve. You know, I had all of the hallmarks of, you know, I had the cars, the art, the houses, the the anything you could want. I have I have done it more than once and and enjoyed the opportunity and been grateful for it. But the reality is, if I had gotten more real with myself about what was happening. And I had contracted and been more intentional and, and frankly, not as arrogant about thinking I deserve to continue living this way. I think that would have made a difference. Like my role really in serving others is recognizing that you shouldn't have to go through what I go through. Because the fact of the matter is, statistically speaking, most men who lived at the level that I did and then had the contraction the way that I did would not have survived. So mm -hmm. I know I am a walking statistic of somebody who made it out of that. And frankly, there, there was an entire year that I didn't think that I would make it out or be able to continue to go on. And I don't want anybody to have to struggle or to be that dire. But again, I think it goes back to shining a spotlight on what are the things that you can take action on to do today 
that could make a difference to stop the bleeding or to, to create a contraction in your world to then get more intentional about how you're going to move forward. I think doing anything with intention is really the foundation for um, being able to sustain and create and then doing it with commitment and consistency. Incredible. You absolutely love that. I know uh, we will explore that in a minute. I know you have got some tremendous stories and I would love for you to share uh, some stories of how you have helped people that were truly stuck, you know, get out of that place and get to a place where they are thriving. In fact, not only that, but they're helping other people, uh, right. you know, out of that state. I've, I've worked with hundreds of those people, but to give you an example, I have a client in Texas um, who is a chiropractor by trade and very interested in holistic healing and working in collaboration with other, you know, providers that, that basically support our showing up in the healthiest versions of our lives. And she has created a, an organization that, that houses a collection of some of the best providers that do this healing work um, really into one rooftop that it's kind of a once, it's not kind of, it is a one-stop shop for people to, to support themselves with their health and healing, whether it's recovering from surgery or an injury or just, you know, aging or just because you want to live, you know, with your best foot forward. Um, when I met her, she was, she had already laid the foundation to open this facility, and it was in kind of a class C building and she offered great service and it was a wonderful space once you got in the door. Now coming in the door and riding up the elevator was a different experience. You might get stuck. <laughs> um, but once you got in there, it was this really, you know, this, this human centric design around supporting the people that, that, that were being served there. And I just loved the concept from that moment. But what I quickly realized is she was paralyzed by money blocks she had a pretty poor mindset and, and had an inability to see her vision really scale and grow in a, in a significant way. Um, and, and really those limitations, which I think serve a lot of people in making decisions in their lives, unfortunately, they can hold you back from really being able to move forward. So what we've done over the course of, of the last four years now is we've, we've systematically peeled those away. We've addressed the business needs that come up. We've, we've created an intentional strategic plan around how to get you moving forward towards the, the desire that you have really, you know, what are the, the three key things we want to work on first and move with intention towards that. But what we really have worked on is, is shifting her mindset. So you fast forward four years, you know, she has moved into a class A office building. We have created a, an incredible space that just literally feels like a warm blanket when you walk in. We get phenomenal um, feedback from people who visit there. And really it is the, the most beautiful culmination of everything she imagined in that small space before. And currently we're looking at how do we franchise this model? How do we create other spaces in other states? How do we cultivate and train um, the providers that we want to offer these services in other communities? Um, really, it's just the most feel-good work that I've done. I mean, I get to work with the most amazing people, but I have to say the people who really show up with a heart of service and a willingness to serve others, like the 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 possibilities are limitless. Yeah, you know, it, it's just it's clearing the blocks that stop you from doing the the heart of what you want to do and moving into it more whole, more wholeheartedly. Like I don't know any other way to. To serve with, that. with with intention, absolutely. Right. Well, well, Bill, if you have someone to write, just in the few minutes, we're going to talk about maybe two or three things that you can do today to help you get out of that state of being stuck. Should you will be stuck, Jason, uh, walk us through your process uh, right now that you've used for many years, perhaps, uh, to help people get out of be it maybe it's a money mindset. Maybe just a, a, a poor belief in, in oneself. What process do you have? What are the steps that anybody right now who's feeling desperate, they need a way out that they can take uh, to ensure that they get unstuck? Sure. I think the process itself is pretty simple, but I don't want to oversimplify the fact the work is still the work. But I think what <laughs> it really starts with is 
is is owning your role, like recognizing where you are and being able to look at, okay, where I wanted to go is here and I'm not there at all. Like owning that from the get go, I think is so important. And then really recognizing, do you have the desire and the willingness to show up and take the next right step? I find where so many business owners get stuck is they want to go up the whole staircase at once. And as you and I both know, you're only going to get up that staircase one stair at a time, maybe two if you're super fit and and agile. Um, But the fact of the matter is it is a next step approach. I think from that perspective of being able to narrow things back down into the next right step, and then showing up with, you know, shifting mindset and showing up with confidence to take the next right step, which then builds upon the next right step. You know, that to me is the systematic approach, like figuring out where you are versus where you want to be, recognizing your role in it. And how do we get you up the staircase? Like yeah. I have found that the things that most people think are going to hold them back or stop them from making decisions, those are the things that are usually easiest to clear. It's the stuff that wakes you up in the middle of the night that hits you like a freight train that you never saw coming that we have to deal with. But the good news is if you've had some success in clearing those blocks, it's so much easier to recognize, oh, maybe dealing with this that's just showed up for me won't be as hard. So, you know, I find most of us only change because something is so painful that we cannot stand it anymore, or we are so miserable, which is again about the same thing, that we recognize we have to change or or we will likely fail. Um, Like showing up from that sense of understanding and recognizing you don't have to get in the depths of despair like I did, um, but having a willingness to show up for yourself, I think it's kind of the foundation to everything. And if you can do that, the rest of it is coachable. Yeah, incredible. I love what you just said there, the willingness to show up for yourself. Let me ask you, Bill, maybe you are there. Uh, Do you have that willingness? You know what, uh, you know, Jason, one of the things that I have struggled perhaps uh, over the years with is uh, not having the belief that I can get to the success that I want to get, even though I know it's possible because I've had several successes. But, you know, in my mind, somewhere at the back of my mind, it's like, "Mm, I don't know if I can do that. For a person who may be like that, you know, how can you help them go past that? Well, I think if they have a desire and a willingness to show up for themselves, that's step one. But but the the real question specifically to what you just mentioned is what is your, what is your feeling of worthiness around having the kind of success that you know right. that's capable right. for yourself? Right. And and again, I don't mean that we're all showing up as as wounded souls in the world. Many of us are. But the fact of the matter is, is we are likely all playing old tapes that we learned somewhere along the way, often in the first 10 years of our lives that we're pressing and not to date myself, but we're pressing play on a tape player over and over and over about stories that just validate we're not worthy. Like Mm. if I have that, like, I don't know who I'm going to become. And I will tell you, I held myself back for a long time because of what happened to me after the financial crash about like, why would anybody see any value in in what I can provide them out of my story? And frankly, if you want to just shift that narrative, why would they not? Like I have literally been to the depths of hell and know what it takes to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and to move forward again. And again, I don't think anybody has to do that or be, you know, in such a catastrophic circumstance. But the fact of the matter is, like like building a business that you know that that you've worked and aspired to have you know we reach levels of plateaus and i think it's another yeah. level of education <laughs> and when something comes up having a willingness to deal with it i think is the thing that sets you up for being able to get whatever you want i mean let's be clear the universe is unlimited you know if there's somebody you want to work with or there's something that you want to do and you have the capability and capacity to do it within the rest of it is figuring out what are the tools or the training that you need to take action to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't mean to simplify it, but you know, I have, I have rarely seen that if somebody wants something bad enough and they have the passion and the fortitude to do what it takes to ensure they have the tools and the training to get it. Like there's, there's no limitation in my mind. 
yeah yeah this is powerful stuff right there uh, you, you know <laughs> this is great you know if you can see it and you really want it you can get it uh, absolutely that's, all, that's what i'm hearing right there amazing well absolutely. get out of your own way is really kind of the unkind way of saying it i mean we we tend to stand in our own light and frankly like nobody's going to show up for you the way that you're going to show up for you so like do you yeah, yeah. you know amazing well uh, ladies and gentlemen if you're feeling unstuck I'm, I'm sure you're finding this conversation very very helpful because i am uh, certainly very grateful for jason to be sharing with that now there are many people in our audience today who have tried some of the strategies that you're sharing and they seem to keep coming back to you know i can't do this or it is not working out for me what would you say to somebody who perhaps is uh, somewhat tired, you know, they know, they've read the books, they have listened to the audio uh, recording, the podcast, and they've been to seminars, uh, and still they get to a place where they look like they only have moved an inch over the last three or five years. I'm going to make it really simple, and it goes back to that next right step principle. Pick one thing that you know you can do committedly and consistently. And, and I don't think it has to be a heavy lift if you're not prepared to do it. Like, look, I work with people that struggle with mental health all the time also. Um, that happens to be another passion of mine to serve that community. But, but you know, the thing that I think we miss in life is getting 15 minutes of sun on your head, taking a walk around the block, writing three things you're grateful for, drinking enough water, getting enough sleep. Like, those are the things that if you can't do anything else, pick one of those and do it committedly and consistently. And by that, I mean, do it every day. And then it becomes a habit and a routine. Once you've built that neural pathway to show up for yourself that way, you'll be ready to take the next right step. In business, if there's something that you haven't been doing and you know you need to do, like figure out what's the piece of that that you can do with commitment and consistency. Start there. Yeah. Don't Again, I go back to we look at the whole staircase and and it becomes so daunting and so overwhelming that we don't even put our our, our foot on the, the first tread to go up the stairs. And, and frankly, you're not going to get up the stairs other than going up the stairs. So you got to start with the next step. But I think choose one that you know you're willing to show up for. People try to choose, oh, I'm going to do this and, you know, I, I'm I'm going to go to the gym every day. And I'm going to, you know, eat healthy every meal. Like, I don't think it plays out well in real life. For some people it does. But, you know, I think it's the same way in business. The habits that we create for ourselves is the same energy that we show up for and create in our business. Amazing. This reminds me of a conversation I had uh, <laughs> a while ago with T. Hav Ekham. And when he was talking about how you do anything is how you do everything. If you master something and really get to your habit in doing that so well, you end up finding that you transfer those skill sets into other areas and then they will compound over a period of time. So I absolutely believe in what you're saying there. And uh, I can see it in my own life that change one thing and be consistent. Right. We'll, we'll, you, you'll see the result in the great areas. Well, and it goes back to that unworthy piece. Like if you're if you're focused on changing 10 things and you're taking action on none of them, starting with one thing is going to feel like progress when you look back and say, oh, but I did that. Yeah. And 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 I just don't think that as humans, we need another reason to beat the crap out of ourselves, like not to be crap, crass, but you know, the, the reality is, is like, we need to be able to show up for ourselves. So we have something to cheer ourselves on for, for accomplishing, like yes. start, start with one next step. Yes. Love that. Love that. Absolutely. We're coming toward the end of our time together, but you've got an interesting approach to life uh, where you talk about, you want to use your talent, your time and energy to serve. Uh, you know, <laughs> how did you come to this approach? Do you seem to be doing it in style too? You know, I, I have had the good fortune of being able to create a life that I love. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's, it is knowing that the right people show up in the right time and place. So if there, there's somebody listening that has a passion and appetite for this, like I might be the guy to serve you. Like I am at a place in my life where probably like you, Yao Kai, I want to work with people who are ready to show up for themselves and get the life that they desire. 
Like, I just, if you're not willing to do the work, like, I'm not the guy for you. You know, I, I, I have had a lot of success in working with people, get the results they want, and, and we can pick a result or many results, but the foundation of doing the work is pretty similar. And what I'm really good at is recognizing where somebody is unstuck and how do we clear the blocks and how do we get you moving forward towards the life you desire yeah. and, and rinse and repeat. Like that, that concept really, from my perspective, sets somebody up to get anything that they seek. And I think it can apply to your personal life or your professional life. And I know many entrepreneurs struggle with having successful personal lives. Like, frankly, why can't you have it all? I have a great business and I have a great home life. And I'm so grateful that what I went through, even though it nearly killed me, it set me up to live a life that I love. And I get to show up and do that every single day. Like, I don't think I'm unique that way. I think anybody can have that if they want to show up for themselves first. Amazing. Outstanding. <laughs> Outstanding. I, I absolutely love that, Ben. Uh, this is great. Well, as we, we are coming toward the end of our time, and I know there will be a lot of people that would want to further uh, spend some time with you or even learn from you. Where can they find you? Yeah, that's super easy. So you mentioned my website earlier. It's realpeoplereallife.org. Um, you can certainly look at the body of work I have there. I will say it does not really encapsulate the private coaching or, or client work that I do with individuals. But if somebody wants to reach out to me, I'm on LinkedIn under Jason Hopkins, Instagram, Facebook. You can find me on any of the social platforms. Um, and if somebody wants to just email me directly, I'm at jason at realpeoplereallife.org. Um, even if you don't know what you're going to ask, like send a conversation starter and we'll see where it takes us. But um, I'm super responsive. And I, you know, again, subscribe to the people that um, are meant to be in my life will show up. And if there is some change that I can affect in yours, I'm here to serve. Wow. Well, what an attitude. No wonder why you're, you're getting it, uh, you know, you're getting it right and getting so many people. Because I'm who, trying. Who, who, to, who, who wouldn't want to work with you? <laughs> I am trying. I'm doing That's my best. Amazing. That's amazing. Well, man, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, before we go, actually, uh, you know, if you were to do it all over again, knowing what you know today, uh, you know, what would be the the first thing you would focus on? If I had to do it all over again, I would not do it for money. From my perspective, showing up with passion and purpose will lead to the resources that you need to live a life you love. So, you know, the, the life I had in my previous version of life was certainly a bigger scale and more magnanimous, but I was miserable. And I think when people pursue things for the sake of thinking, oh, if I have this or I get that, the life is going to become what I want. It's the wrong reason to pursue anything. Figure out what you have passion for, figure out what you have purpose for, show up committedly and consistently to do that, and you can have anything you want. <laughs> well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friend here, Jason Hopkins, sharing with you strategies that have been proven to work consistently over the years to help you to get unstuck, or maybe it's somebody you know who's struggling. Can I ask you to send them this recording so that they too may discover the principles that we are talking about here today? And if you've got any question, reach out in the community or just, uh, you know, let us know how we can help you. And, and well, most importantly, reach out to Jason. Just click the link below this recording and you can get the support. And remember what we always say, never leave a place of discovering a principle or a concept without scheduling when you're going to be implementing what you discovered today. So can I ask you, when are you going to be implementing to what you've discovered today? Is it tomorrow? Is it next month? What, whenever you choose. And here's the thing, when you fail to implement, ask yourself, why haven't you perhaps implemented what you truly believe was going to help you? Because that same thing could be stopping you from implementing any other good things that you could be enjoying over the next season of your business or your life. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. And uh, thank you, Jason, for being here on the show as well. Yeah, Kai, it was a pleasure. I appreciate you. And it was an opportunity to show up and serve. Incredible. Until next time, live well, live with passion. Know that the best is truly yet to come. Goodbye for now.
Thank you for listening to Yukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.yukaibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. 